Section 8.1, Allied Health Capstone, Conversions and Dosage Measurement. This section will help you practice common conversions used in health fields, become familiar with the equipment used to measure medicine. Common conversions used in health fields. Measurement and measurement conversions are very important to health professionals. Medication is usually prescribed as a unit of weight and the correct unit of volume or capacity must be identified to deliver the correct dose. Health professionals must be proficient at converting measurements in the metric system, U.S. system, and converting between these two systems. U.S. units of weight, volume, and their equivalents. So we have a conversion chart here, and this is something that you're familiar with by now. So we've got some for uh, weight, and for volume, and for length, and these are common measurements in the U.S. system of measure. Now down here we have metric prefixes commonly used by healthcare professionals. We've already studied the metric system, but in the health professions, there are specific metric measurements or metric prefixes that they use often. And then instead of using all the ones in between, we go straight then to the, to the direct unit. And anytime we're making a conversion between kilo, like for example, kilograms to grams, we move the decimal three places. Uh, another common one now when we're going from the unit of measure, then we go to milli, which again is another three decimal places. And then the final one is micro for measuring very small amounts of things. And then again, three decimal places. So in the healthcare professions, they use this actually, it's very convenient that between the most common measurements used in the health professions, all the decimal movements are three places, either to the left or the right, depending on which way we're converting. Metric and U.S. system conversions used by health professionals. Uh, here are some common ones. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. One kilogram is 2.2 pounds. One fluid ounce is 30 milliliters. One teaspoon is five milliliters. One liter is approximately one quart. So this is not exact here, but this is usually what is used in the health professions. One liter, approximately one quart, and then that is 32 fluid ounces. One quart is 32 fluid ounces, and then one cc is the same as one milliliter. Let's take a look at an example here, see how we use these. Example one, a child is taking five milliliters of cough medicine three times a day. If the full bottle contains three fluid ounces, how many days will the cough medicine last? All right, well, let's see. First thing we're gonna do is we need to convert this three fluid ounces into milliliters. So we're going to convert this into milliliters. So let's see, we would say, all right, three fluid ounces, right, is a fraction over one. Now we're going to start converting this. So we want to divide out the fluid ounces now and turn this into milliliters, to milliliters. That'll be our first one there. So let's see. So we got one fluid ounce is equal to 30 milliliters. And let's see, that would give us now milliliters. So that's exactly what we want. So it looks like we're just going to multiply the 3 times the 30. So it looks like our fluid ounces divide out nice for us, leave us with just milliliters. And we'll take 3 times 30, which will give us 90 milliliters. Now, we're supposed to be giving 5 milliliters of cough medicine 3 times a day. That means 15 milliliters per day. So basically, we're going to take 90 milliliters and divide it by 15, which we're giving each day. And if we take 90 divided by 15, we're going to get six days worth of medicine here. Go ahead and pause your video player now and answer practice problems 2, 3, and 4. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Practice problem 2. A child has a head circumference of 52 centimeters. An interested parent wants to know how many inches that is. What do you tell the parent? So we need to convert centimeters to inches. So we'd say, okay, 52 centimeters. We write that as a fraction over one. Now we want to divide out the centimeters and introduce the inches. Now we just go to our chart here to get this conversion. And it is one inch is 2.54 centimeters. You can see here the centimeters are going to divide out nice for us. And it looks like all I got to do is take 52 divided by 2.54 and it will give me about 20 and a half inches, approximately 20 and a half inches. All right, question three. 
convert 250 micrograms to milligrams. So now we're converting in the metric system. We don't need fractions to do this. And so micrograms are, micrograms are smaller than milligrams on our prefix chart. We got milligrams and then we got micrograms. And remember, in these health fields, they're three places apart. So all I got to do now is take 250, take 250 micrograms and to convert this into milligrams I'm going to move the decimal three places to the left. Notice in the number 250 the decimal starts right over here on the right so I'm going to move it one, two, three places to the left and that is going to be 0 0.25 milligrams. Now it's very important in the health fields that whenever we're talking about a decimal number we always write the zero in front of it. It's really easy to miss that decimal if we don't write that zero in front. So anytime you're talking about a decimal number like 0.25, you always make sure you write 0 0.25. Question four, convert 20 fluid ounces into liters. All right, we're going to take 20 fluid ounces and we want to convert that into liters. So let's look at our chart here. Scroll back up here. Fluid ounces to liters. So we can go fluid ounces to liters. Oh, it's right here. So we got 32 fluid ounces is approximately equal to one liter. So I come back down here and say, okay, we want to divide out the fluid ounces and introduce the liters. And so we said 32 fluid ounces was equal to one liter. So all we're going to have to do now to solve this is divide 20 by 32. And that is 0 0.625 liters. Question 5. A mother is supplementing her breast milk with formula. If the infant gets 4 fluid ounces every 6 hours, how many quarts of formula would you recommend she buy for a 5-day supply? Alright, I think what we first need to do is figure out how much is going to happen here in one day. So in one day, she gets four fluid ounces every six hours. Well, if she's getting it every six hours, that means she's getting it four times a day. And the way I came up with that is 24 hours divided by six. So four times a day, she's getting four times a day, four fluid ounces. So it looks like 16 fluid ounces each day. All right, now we want to know how much for a five-day supply. So all we're going to do is take 16 times five and that's going to give us 80 fluid ounces for five days. Okay, converting between Celsius and Fahrenheit. To convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit, we just use these two formulas. So if we're starting with Celsius and we want to figure out what that temperature is in Fahrenheit, we use this formula. If we're starting with Fahrenheit and we want to convert it to Celsius, we use this formula. Let's take a look at examples six and seven here. Okay, so we're going to convert 45 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. So since we're converting Celsius to Fahrenheit, I'm going to use this formula right here. I've plugged in 45 degrees Celsius for C. Now I'm going to solve this. Notice that uh, this number is going to get multiplied by a fraction, so let's think of 45 as a fraction. So I'll go 9 over 5 times 45 over 1 plus 32. And you can see there's a common factor of 5 hiding in each of these, so I'm going to divide that out. So it'll be a 1 here, and it will be a 9 there. So it looks like I'm going to have 9 times 9 plus 32. Uh, 9 times 9 is 81. 81 plus 32 is 113 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll put an F at the end there for Fahrenheit. Okay, question seven. Convert 50 degrees Celsius now back to Fahrenheit. So we're going to use this formula here. Fahrenheit to Celsius. So we'd say, okay, Celsius equals 5 times, in this case, 50 minus 160 over 9. Okay, so all I'm going to do is follow the order of operations here. 5 times 50 is 250. 250 minus 160 gives us 90 and the 90 divided by 9 gives us 10 degrees Celsius. Go ahead and pause your video player now and answer practice questions 8 and 9. When you're done hit play to see how you did. 
All right, converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. So we're going to go Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths times 15 times 15 over 1, since we're multiplying it by a fraction, plus 32. Okay, you can see their common factor. 5 divides out 1 here, 3 there. So it looks like we're going to get 27 plus 32 for a final temperature of 59 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, convert 41 degrees to Celsius. So we say, okay, Celsius. So I've substituted 41 degrees into my formula there. And all I'm going to do is follow the order of operations to solve. Take 5 times 51, or 41 minus 160. And then divide that by 9. And it looks like we're going to get 5 degrees Celsius. The equipment used to administer medicine. Accurate measurement is an important part of administering the correct amount of medicine. And so... We've got a couple different things here. First is oral medicine measurements, and we have a dropper. And some of these are going to be familiar to you because we take some of these, use some of these measurement tools at home. So we have a dropper, uh, a medicine spoon, uh, an oral syringe, and then a dosage cup. These are the common ones used for oral medication. And of course, they all have very precise measurements on the side of them to get the correct amount of medication. So we also have injection and intravenous syringes. And so if it calls for injection or intravenous, these are the tools we're going to use. Um, if we're going to measure smaller amounts of medicine, we have a 1 mil uh, syringe, a 3 mil, a 5 mil, a 10 mil, and as we start to get larger and larger, 20, 30, and even a 60 mil syringe. These are commonly used for injections or intravenous. Uh, the larger ones, of course, are used for, for intravenous usually. A lot of times the smaller ones are used for injection, but these are the tools we use for both injection and intravenous medication delivery. Go ahead and pause your video player now and read this article by Dr. Michael uh, Gaunt. Example 10. Draw a line to match the listed volume with the correct syringe. Shade the indicated volume medicine on the syringe. All right. So the idea behind syringes is we want to use the smallest syringe possible to administer the medication. Smaller, smaller doses need more precise measurement. So here I'm looking at the 19 ml syringe. Uh, that obviously we're going to we're going to measure that one with a 20 milliliter syringe and so i'm just going to shade this in here say okay i'd fill the syringe up right up to here is where i'd want that syringe to be filled right up to 19 milliliters all right 3.6 so we want that guy to go down here with the smaller one notice three is going to be easy uh we got to figure out what these uh, marks indicate here. Notice there, it doesn't look like there's 10 of them between here. It looks like there's one, two, three, four, five. So each of these little marks is actually 0.2 milliliters. So I'd go, all right, I'd shade right up to here would be three and then 0.6. So there is 3.2, 3.4, 3.6. Shade that all in there. That's how much medication we want to fill that to. All right, 8.2. Again, here's 8, and it looks like, again, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So these are going by increments of 2, so we'd want to shade right to there and shade the rest of that in. Go ahead and pause your video player now and, and answer practice question 11. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. All right, we want to match these things up correctly. So it looks like the four milliliter syringe is going to go right there. And that's going to be pretty easy. That will shade that right up to four. 2.5, we want that to go with this three milliliter syringe. And it looks like they got a nice mark there for two and a half. So we'd shade right to there. Uh, 0.5 now. Let's take a look at this guy right there. Looks like, uh, yep, they got nice measurements here. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, so we'd go right to there. Shade that in. 
So as I mentioned before, you may have noticed that the 0.5 milliliters could have been administered either using the 1 milliliter syringe or the 3 milliliter syringe. But to make sure that measurement is accurate as possible, we always choose the smallest syringe that will do the job. Let's say a mistake was made and each syringe was filled one tick mark over the 0.5 milliliters. Let's look at this mistake on a 1 milliliter and a 3 milliliter syringe. Okay, So we're going to figure out the percent overdose on a one milliliter syringe. So one tick mark overflow over overfill on a one milliliter syringe is uh, one hundredth of a milliliter. So one hundredth of a milliliter. And remember, if we're talking about a percent overdose here, we're talking about percent change. And remember, percent change is the change over the original. So in this case, we overfilled it one hundredth of a milliliter. So that's the change that we've gone over. Uh, the size of the original was a 0.5 milliliter dose. That's what we were supposed to give. And so if we overfill this syringe 0.01 milliliters, we get a 2% overdose, a very small overdose. Now let's look at it on a 3 milliliter syringe. So if we make a mistake on a 3 milliliter syringe and overfill at one tick mark now, we're going to get 0.6 milliliters instead of 0.5 milliliters. So now we're giving one tenth of a milliliter overdose and divided by our, our, our original, which is 0.5 milliliters, you can see here that we get a 20% overdose. And when we're talking about medication, that's significant. 20% overdose versus a 2% overdose. This is a much better kind of mistake to make than a 20% overdose. So that's why we always use the smallest syringe possible to do the job. Go ahead now and uh, answer practice question 12. All right, shade 1.3 milliliters on the syringe. That is the best size. All right, so we're taking a look here. Uh, 1.3, we want to use the smallest possible. Well, 5 milliliters would do it. 3 milliliters would do it. Uh, 1 milliliter is not going to do this. We don't have any measurements here to get that 0.3 after that. So the 3 milliliter syringe is going to be our best choice. So let's say we want 1.3 milliliters. So here's 1. Let's start there. Now let's figure out what 0.3 is going to look like. So notice here, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 tick marks here. So every one of these things, every one of these tick marks is actually 0.1 milliliter. So we're going to go uh, 1, 2, 3. So we should shade it right to there, 1.3 milliliters. Go ahead now and answer practice question 13. All right, shade 4.5 milliliters on the syringe. That is the best size. Uh, well, 4.5, there's only one that's large enough to do that. It looks like here, notice uh, these are going by increments of 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So we want to shade 4.5. So let's see, that's going to be uh, 2, 4. we got to go right halfway between there. So we want to shade that much on there for 4.5 milliliters. Okay, this is the end of the video. Now you're ready to go ahead and answer all of the questions in 8.1 exercises.